Okay, so we will be going over every single feature of Cloud Code that was added in the last week. But before getting started, it's worth me mentioning that I have a Cloud Code Masterclass where I go through every single feature of Cloud Code, as well as a bunch of bonus content and techniques, some of which you won't find anywhere else here on YouTube. And since I've never accepted a sponsor on the channel, I never plan to, my classes and also applications like HyperWhisper basically keep the channel going. Anyways, getting started, Cloud Code can now control Cloud in Chrome. So if you don't know already, this is a browser extension for for Google Chrome and Chromium-based browsers. So when you sign into your account and click on the button, then you can see you have Claude on the right-hand side here. And you can do like any basic tasks like getting it to summarize a page and so forth. But the interesting thing here is that now Claude Code can connect and control your browser via this extension. So firstly, you want to make sure you're on the latest version of Claude Code by doing Claude Update. And then after that, you can run Claude Code. And then you want to run slash Chrome. And then you can see the extension is installed and the status is enabled. So you may need to run connect extension or something. And then after that, you can go to manage permissions and then basically see all the permissions that Claude in Chrome has access to. And then using my application Hypospur, there will be a link down below to this. I can basically say something like, can you go to ChatGPT and then ask ChatGPT a question and then give me the answer back? And then press enter. And then you can see that it spawns up a brand new tab for me, like a brand new window, where it's going to start executing on things. And you can see Claude Code can see the available tabs that it has access to. And in Chrome, at least, it kind of has this tab group that it can like control. Can you ask ChatGPT why they should take Ray Amjad's master Claude Code class? And then press enter. And then we should see actually executing on things. And now you can see it's actually executing because it goes to chatgpt.com. It then takes a screenshot, I think, to basically understand how things are looking. So if we put this on the left-hand side, and you can see it then enters information into ChatGPT on the right-hand side, presses enter, and then it snoozes for about three seconds and it's like still waiting. And one of the things that it actually has access to is any console logs inside the browser. So when Cloud Code is like executing and actually doing things within your browser, like pressing buttons, clicking around, entering text, then it can debug itself if it runs into a console like browser error. And of course you can get it to many other things as well. Previously you could have used like Cloud in Chrome to like go on LinkedIn or another website and scrape data. Um, but hey, it's like much nicer because because the two are linked together. So then you can use Cloud Code to connect an MCP server, use any subagents, connect to skills, and basically do everything else Cloud Code can do with the browser basically attached onto it. So this can be useful for people who are using like the Puppeteer MCP server or something like that. You can probably replace that with this Cloud in Chrome uh, connected to Cloud Code. And now ChatGPT basically gave a bunch of the reasons why you should take the class. And then Cloud Code actually scrolls down through the web page to gather all the information, and then it will provide it back to me. So this should open and put a bunch more use cases because whilst we did have similar things before, we now have a more tightly coupled solution with Cloud Code and that should perform better as well. And then we have the answer that Cloud Code gave from ChatGPT. So I just tried to get it to run Cloud in Chrome with Cloud Code inside a subagent because it does fill up the context window when it's doing a bunch of things and I only want the final result. But currently, it doesn't seem to be able to do that for some reason. So I think if that was added, then this feature would basically be perfected. You can also say, are there any console errors, for example? And then Claude in Chrome would read the console log messages as well. Anyways, we now have reduced terminal flickering. And there's a good post on Twitter by one of the developers about why this was an issue for such a long time. And yeah, you can read through that yourself. It's pretty interesting. If you do slash mobile now, then you can see that it shows a QR code to go to the iOS store or Android store to download the mobile app. Unfortunately, they changed the thinking toggle from tab to alt T instead, which basically means that previously if you press tab, then that would turn on thinking. Now, if you press option T on your keyboard, if you're on macOS or alt T if you're on Windows, then that should show thinking mode. But you can see it shows a dagger for me right now. And that's like something built into macOS. So what you want to do is if you're using warp, then you want to go to settings in the top right, search for meta, and where it says left option key is meta, you want to turn that on. And now if you press option T, it should then turn off and on thinking. So if you're seeing a dagger on macOS after pressing option T, then you want to go to your settings on your terminal and find a setting that's kind of like this, left option key is meta. In some cases, Cloud Code may also show you prompt suggestions when it thinks you're about to do something. So you can see in this case, the person commits the changes locally on their computer, and then it suggests push the changes. So you can press tab and then that will like autofill the prompt and then you can press enter. So I personally found this behavior to be pretty annoying when it came to coding. So what I do is I just go to the slash config 
And then when it says prompt suggestions, I just turn that off instead. Thought code now also has improved syntax highlighting to show which changes are actually made to your code base. So this is what it currently looks like. And if I go to a previous example, this is what it kind of looks like before. So you can see putting them side by side, the new one does look better because of the color scheme and the line number being highlighted and a few other things. When it comes to plugins, there's now a first party marketplace. If you do slash plugins, then you can see all the official cloud code plugins that they have available. So like Chrome DevTools, Asana, Code Review, Opus 415 Migration, Contact 7. So this is what the official marketplace looks like on GitHub. And then for these marketplaces, you can also disable automatic updating uh, to preserve a older version of the marketplace on your computer. They now also add a brand new current usage field to the status line input, which means that you can now have more accurate status lines. So if you do slash status line, and then after that you say something like, can you basically make a pretty simple status line that has like a battery and it shows an amount of context that I've used in the current context window so far? And you can see this is the kind of status line that it now came up with, which should be pretty accurate because it now has access to that current usage information. They did remove the hashtag shortcut for adding things to cloud.md files, so maybe they will use that for something else in the future. Thinking mode will now be on by default when you're using Opus 4.5. Now, when you're in the middle of writing a prompt, you can switch out the model to a different one before pressing enter by pressing option P on macOS or alt P on Windows. And this is pretty handy because otherwise you would have press enter, then stop the agent, and then switch the model, and then press enter again. And those are basically all the changes that I thought were worth talking talking about. And also I was watching this video or podcast episode of the creative cloud code talking about cloud code itself. And like, I really begin to understand why it's such a good coding agent because they're not focused on their competitors like whilst many competitors like Codex CLI, Factory CLI and so forth, all looking at the new features that cloud code has introduced and adding it to their own coding agents. Cloud code is still kind of leading the way because he just doesn't look at what the competitors are doing. He says that he just builds things that are useful to Anthropic employees and also their users instead of doing anything like looking at competitors. So I guess that's probably one reason why Cloud Code is always one step ahead of everyone else. Anyways, if you're interested in learning more about how you can be using Cloud Code effectively and a bunch of advanced techniques to get the most out of it, then I do cover that in my Cloud Code Masterclass that will be linked down below. And if you are interested in hearing from me on a more regular basis in your email inbox and not having the algorithm only tell you when the videos are published, then I do have an email newsletter that I just started and I will be sharing a bunch of techniques I'm discovering, any thoughts that I have on new models, research papers I have been reading and a bunch of other things as well. It is brand new and there will be a link down below if you're interested. And if you do reply to any of the emails from the email newsletter, then I will try to reply to you as well. And finally, if you're interested in the application that I was using throughout the video for voice to text, then that will also be a link down below. It's my own application. And since I don't accept sponsors, applications like these and classes basically help keep the channel going.